My students always tell me how frustrated they are when they buy a commercial pattern or download a PDF pattern and they don't know how to take their correct measurements or to take their measurements and to look at the pattern grade size and to see which size would suit them best. Today I'm going to show you how to do all that, take your measurements, work out adding some ease and a quarter scale measurement and then to look at the commercial pattern and then to see which size will be the closest to you. It's just all about making your garments fit you with a more of a custom kind of look. So this is the kind of content that you absolutely enjoy. Well then let's get started. love fashion and you love sewing your own clothes and um, creating your own wardrobe planning your wardrobe or even designing and sewing for clients then this is definitely the place to hang out this is all the kind of videos i'm going to be sharing with you as well as the courses and products that i have so this is tanya sutherland and if you really enjoy this kind of content how about giving me some love and press that subscribe button down below so that you are notified of my weekly videos which will be on a Friday and now and again I'll throw in a surprise video on a Tuesday all about styling or look or lookbook around my uh, pattern collection just to show you the garments really made up so you can see what the pattern looks like in a garment and styled in different ways. I'm going to be taking nine measurements um, for the shirt pattern to make sure that it fits you the closest possible to your measurements. So the first measurement will be your bust measurement and I do recommend that you stand in front of a mirror when you take your measurements that you can actually see your body because if you are folding down your body proportions will be changing and therefore the measurements will change as well. So start off with taking your bust measurement and make sure that your tape measure is straight right across. So you will take the bust measurements, which will be basically over the apex. Now also to consider now if you're wearing a very padded bra or you're not wearing a bra and the nipple will be either higher or lower depending on your bust line. Okay. So decide whether you want to measure with the bra on or without a bra and keep that in mind when you are making up your garment, what kind of bra you would be wearing with your top. The next measurement will be your waist measurement. If you take your tape measure and you actually just wiggle it in the smallest area of your body, that is usually your waist measurement. So take your waist measurement, stand up straight, look in the mirror, take the measurement, little bump around you. So I always like to add that in as well because we have different shapes and we are curved. We are working on a straight flat pattern. And we have to make sure we put all those measurements into your pattern. So I normally take it over the navel area, which is usually round about your belly button or just, just slightly your bit below your belly button. I've written that down. One. The next one is your first hip. So if you can actually feel your bones, this is your first hip measurement. So keep your legs together and take that measurement. That's your first hip. Your second measurement will be your second hip. So it's usually the widest area of your hip. In this case, we're just going to be taking um, where your crutch line is. That'll be the widest area we're going to be taking because it's going to be a shirt. This is not a tunic, so the shirt will be more or less up until your hip area. You write that down. So your bicep is usually the widest area of your arm. It's usually between your elbow and your actual shoulder line. So take that measurement. Okay. The next one will be your sleeve length. So the least number at the bottom of the tape measure and the highest number on the top. And then I will stand in front of the mirror and I will drop the tape measure. And mine is 58 centimeters. Be shoulder to waist. So you take your, your tape measure and you put it, pretend you have an invisible line on your shoulder, exactly where your seam line would be in a garment. So place that in the middle of your shoulder, go over the bust line, and then look for your waist. If you can't find your waist, just bend over slightly. And where you, you've kept your hand, keep the tape measure over the bust, 
that will be your waist measurement. So once you've got that measurement, you can actually put your hand on your waist, take the tape measure, measure it down, more or less where you'd like the length of your shirt. So mine is about 18 centimeters from my waistline. So here is my pattern, it's in my file. I keep the originals in the file. So this, we're gonna be working with the quick sew, which is basically a shirt back pattern, and it has got bust dots and waist contour dots. You could always leave the waist dot out if you don't want it, but today we're gonna be working out the measurements with the dot to give you that shape. Go through your pattern and see um, the, the pattern pieces that you need to take out. The sleeve, the cuff, the back of the shirt, and the front of the shirt. So I've done a very quick sketch. And I've written down the pattern number. So now I can start looking at my measurements and we can first of all work out our measurements with ease. This is the nine measurements that is required for you to make your shirt. So the first one will be the bust. So I measured across my bust and I got my full measurement. Then I added four centimeters to my bust, which is for the ease so that I can have a bit of movability in my garment. The next one was my waist. So from my waist, I measured 71 centimeters and I added four centimeters for my ease. I did the same for the tummy, which is over the navel area. So I've also added my four centimeters. My first hip, I added four centimeters. My second hip, I also added four centimeters. But on my bicep, I allowed three centimeters for ease to go around my bicep. The next one is your sleeve length, which was from your shoulder to your wrist, just below the wrist. I normally like to let my sleeve just go past this bone where your hand basically, you know, you got the joint of your arm and then your hand where it folds. I normally like my shirt to sort of sit over there or my jacket lens to be over there. Um, shoulder to waist, which is over the bust line to the natural waist, and then waistline to hemline the length of your shirt. So you're not going to touch these measurements because these are set standard measurements of your body we are looking at your body measurements from your bust to your hip once you've done that you've added your four centimeters then you need to divide it by four to give you that quarter measurement because if you look at your commercial patterns or a downloaded pdf commercial pattern you'll see that the patterns have been the measurements have been worked out also in a quarter scale. So here is a front. So if you look at the patterns telling you to cut two times material, so that gives you two fronts. If you look at the back, it tells you cut one on fold. So this will be on the one side, which could be the right side, and the other side, the left side. That is giving you two. So therefore, it is giving you four quarters giving you your full circumference of your actual measurements. But we have added in the ease so that we can have movability. Otherwise, we'll have a straight jacket if you don't add any ease into your garment. The commercial patterns also have ease already in the patterns. They normally mention it. We are going to be looking at our own measurements, adding in our ease, and then seeing which size will be the closest to trace off or to cut out to make your garment. Here is the front of the garment. Now, have a look at your pattern first. Here is the front of the pattern piece of your shirt. So, first of all, it tells you here is your center front line. So, that is your center front line, and then it's showing you where your front edge is. So, this is now obviously adding on your button stand to put your buttons. So, we are going to be measuring from the center front. So, I'm just going to fold the pattern on the center front just to avoid any confusion. So that is your center front. Look at my measurements. So first of all, I just do a quick drawing. This is my notes as I'm going along for my pattern to see which one I need to cut out. 
So this particular pattern has got extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. It's not the normal one where it tells you 32, 34, 36, 38, or 18, 12, 16, depending on what system that you're working with, metric or imperial. So my bust measurement is 95 centimeters with ease. I'll look at the pattern and get an idea what the pattern suggests. So the pattern says a small is 96 centimeters. So, I'm, so I've got an idea I could be a small. I'll leave the link down below from the, for the previous uh, videos that I've done about the skirt, how to select the correct size skirt in a skirt pattern. That was the one. The other one is the video. Lay your fabric, put your pattern down, work out your grain and actually to cut out your garment. So I'll leave those links down below for you. It's all about enhancing your skills measure and I'm going to measure 24 centimeters as I have on my quarter scale so if you have a look this is your bust area because you can actually see this is where the dots are lined so I'm now going to work more or less where the small is because that is approximately the size the pattern suggests that I am I'm laying my tape measure on my center front and I'm going to go to the end of the pattern so if you have a look at this as best Gary's a size small line. So if I look at my 24, I still need to add one and a half centimeter seam allowance. I mean, these were measurements with ease, not including your seam allowance. So on the pattern, at my bust on this pattern, I am a size small. So I'm just making a note. The next one would be the waist. So there's no waistline in the front of the pattern, but there's a waistline in the back of the pattern. So I'm just going to get an idea where it is. My tape measure, I'm laying it on the center front. And keep in mind there's a dot. So here is the small dot. And I'm going to measure from the beginning of the dot to the end of the dot. So here is my measurement. I still need to add in one and a half centimeter seam allowance, which now becomes an extra small. So my waist is an extra small. I will leave the links down below and I'll leave some pictures up above to show you about my five courses that I have, which is more about custom fit. So to, to make your garments look more tailored. And this you could do for your own sewing creating your own wardrobe or if you're taking this to the next level and you're actually turning this into a business or you're sewing for clients so let's have a look at my tummy measurement so we know that this is more or less where the waist is so my tummy is about five centimeters from my waist that's where my navel wood should be and that is 21.5 i'm taking my tape measure measuring 21.5 centimeters Going over from the center front, seeing where the dart is positioned, jumping over the dart. So if I look at this, I am closer to a small. So I'm going to write here, tummy. I'm closer to a small. So when you've got your waist position, your first hip is approximately 10 centimeters from your waist. So I'm going to measure the 10 centimeters down below from the waistline and work out my first hip measurement, which is 23 centimeters, placing the tape measure on the center front. So now I'm missing the dot. I'm going over and as you can see, another one and a half centimeters. So I'm basically an extra small first hip. Let's look at the second hip. The second hip is 25.5 and it's about 20 centimeters from your waistline. Going down is 20 centimeters. So I'm measuring 25.5, putting it on the center front, taking it over, and I am a small. Because I'm on the extra small line, but I need to add seam allowance, so I'm a small. So this was just working out the measurements on the pattern. We're going to take it one step further and we are going to just get one more custom fit. So we are going to look at the shoulder line. 
So that is your cutting line. Your stitching line is one and a half centimeters in. I'm going to measure from the middle of the shoulder line, taking my tape measure, bringing it down from the middle, and I'm going to measure 45 centimeters because I wrote down shoulder to waist and mine is 45 centimeters. So here is my true waist. There's my true waist. If I lay the pattern down, you can actually see it says the waist is up here. My true waist is approximately down here. You see how that can change the fit? I'm going to take the back and do the exactly same with the back. Okay, so now I'm just going to have a look at the small. And I'm going to do the bust area, my waist, my hip, and take it from there. Okay, so here's the center back. It's placed on the fold. So there's no seam allowance over there. So the bust measurement was 24. So I'm putting my tape measure on 24. So there's a little bit of a dart here, about half a centimeter. So I'm going to jump over the dart. Now when I look at my back, my tape measure ends up on the small, but I'm still at seam allowance. So if I look at the back of the pattern, the back bust, I'm a small and a half. Let's have a look at my waist measurement, which is 19 centimeters, the quarter measurement. I'm going to go over the dot. Here is the small. If I add my seam allowance, so my waist is still a small. I'm now going to look at my tummy measurement, and my tummy is 21.25. I'm going to jump over the dart. So I'm basically on the extra small. I still need to add seam allowance. So um, my first hip, my first hip is an extra small, same as the front. My second hip measurement is 25.5. There's no dart. So it's basically a size small as sleeve. I am a small for the underarm, for the side seam. So I need to work on the small of the sleeve. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my bicep measurement in here. So your bicep is usually about, if you look at your underarm, it's about four to five centimeters from your underarm seam. So it's approximately over here. So now, normally you'll see there's a notch in your pattern sleeves right about this area here. It also indicates where your bicep would be situated. Okay, so now mine is 27 centimeters fitted with a three centimeter ease, so it's 30 centimeters. So now I'm gonna take 30 centimeters, put it with inside the sleeve. And you can still see there's still seam allowance on either side. So I have more than enough room for my arm to fit quite comfortable in this particular top. The matter of fact, it's quite loose. I could always taper it once I do my fitting. The next thing would be is to measure your sleeve. So the first line is small, extra small. The second one is small. Remember, this is your cutting line. So you still need to go in one and a half centimeter seam allowance for your stitching line. Okay, so now the sleeve has got a cuff. It's not that the sleeve doesn't fit exactly the length, it's slightly longer to create that little bit of blue zone and then the cuff comes along. So if I fold this cuff in half, the way you're going to stitch it, and I take away from my seam allowance, so there is the bottom of the cutting line, there's my seam allowance. So this cuff, so the cuff width is five centimeters. Okay. So now let me look at my sleeve length. My sleeve length, my full sleeve is 58. So now I'm going to measure from the small stitching line and see what the sleeve length is. The sleeve length, with excluding the seam allowance at the bottom here, at the bottom of the sleeve, 
is 53 centimeters. Okay. So 53 plus 5 is 58. And my sleeve length is 58. So I could either leave it exactly like that, or I have an option of making my sleeve slightly longer. If I feel I want to add an extra centimeter, just for that extra little bit of blue zone in my sleeve, you can always just add an extra centimeter to the hemline of the sleeve, not changing any of the information on your pattern. You'll just drop this all down to one centimeter to add that length. All right, so I hope that is giving you some sort of guideline of what size you are. Okay, the next step would be is to work out how long are we going to make our top, our shirt. So my shirt length from my waistline is 18 centimeters from the waistline. I like to measure from my waistline and not from my shoulder. So from my waistline, this is something you learn when you draft patterns when I was a designing student. Um, this is how we were taught. Um, you basically measure your length from your waistline, um, your true waist, that's how we work the measurement, not from the shoulder going down. Okay, now I have got um, my true waistline and I wanna add 18 centimeters. So this is basically where the hemline should finish of my shirt but I still need to add on hem allowance and you look at the design and then you decide what kind of hem are you going to be doing is it going to be a large hem a small hem a standard just fold up stitch hem is it going to be a cover stitch hem is it going to be a roll hem that can also determine what kind of hem allowance you need to put on so this would just be overlocked in a one centimeter um, fold back seam so if I look at 18 plus, let's make it one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So this is where I'd be tracing off my hemline. So you could always just say, you know, it's, it's, like, it's just under a centimeter. You could actually just follow the small as it is without making any adjustments to the pattern. So when I look at my sizes and overall, I am basically a size small. So I'm going to trace off the shirt a size small as is and then when I do my fitting I will taper where necessary. In the next video I will be doing the same sort of concept but this time we're doing a dress. I'll show you how to take the measurements and then to work out in the commercial pattern which one will be the closest for you to trace off.